Hello. Let me just get that camera right. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Is everybody there? Can you hear me? Uh, that's the main thing, just to check. Um, are we all in for next pub quiz? Yeah, that's right. It's pub quiz time again. Happy Wednesday, everybody. And uh, welcome to uh, Hump Day, Wednesday. Uh, we are going to get ourselves through the week uh, by having uh, another... Th hello, gorgeous. Hello, Caroline. And uh, ready in South London. Hello, Harry. Um, and uh, yeah, good to be back with you all. I hope you're all well. I hope you're coping with lockdown. And uh, of course, uh, Probably some of you out there have been doing some homeschooling, so hello to any families that are there. 7 a.m. on a dark Sydney morning. Shona, good to have you with us. And uh, yeah, hi JP, hi everybody who's tuning in. Um, hope your week has been going well. We will get underway in just a minute. Um, 40 questions are going to be coming at you like we have done a couple of times before. Uh, and, uh, and it's all about uh, being a pub quiz, so uh, I hope you've charged your glasses. 7 in the morning in Sydney. Well, it's always 5 o'clock somewhere. It's 8 o'clock here, and it's time to say cheers. G&T time. Mm. Oh, that's right. Uh, can you quiz alone? Of course you can. Uh, you can link up by Zoom, you can link up by House Party, then you've got to work out who's going to be live streaming the YouTube or I'll be all out of sync and echoey, 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 echoey. Um, but uh, you'll work out a way how to do it. Um, and the background, my darling husband Tom is just uh, preserving dinner for afterwards which is very good. He might eat his, but he's up and about and feeling much better. Thanks for everyone who was asking. Um, and you can all say hello to yourselves there. Uh, one thing is we can't stop the uh, Tom Maidment says, hi, Tom. Do you know Tom Maidment? Yeah? No? No, doesn't know who you are. Um, but anyway, everyone says hi. Um, hi, Ali. Um, we can't stop people putting the answers in the chat here. Uh, so work out when you want to engage with that and when you don't. Ultimately, it's up to us to, uh, to not cheat and just play the game and answer the questions. So uh, if that's what you want to do, if you want to ruin it for everybody else and put the answer in the chat, that's up to you, totally fine. But uh, just to let you all know that I can't police that. So just look after yourselves and each other with the answers in your own little groups. Um, hey, Simon Robinson. Um, so uh, I think we're all just about ready, right? Yeah, you see, you can just hide the chat as you're all saying. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's great to have you all here um, and uh, look, we will try and get through this. Um, this is our Wednesday night quiz. I think we'll do another one on Saturday because people tend to be a little bit more ready for it come the weekend. Um, but uh, it is time for pens and papers at the ready. Oh, I also want to, uh, to hear all about your, uh, your, your team names. Uh, quiz Team Aguilera, Quiz Team Bleakley, all of those lovely names. Uh, it's great to get those through. So come up with a team name. It's a pub quiz after all. Um, and uh, we'll do 20 questions, then we'll review the 20, do the answers. We'll get some half-time scores. We'll have a little bit of a break. Everyone can have a little drinkable. And, uh, and then we'll all come back in for a little bit more. Uh, so are you ready, Turbo Boosters? I like it. Um, we're getting some team names coming through now. Um, but I think it's time to play Nick's Pop Quiz. Quarantine, yes. Quizzy Rascal, that's an old classic. Question one. All right, question one. Gone for a little bit of an international feel where I can and uh, the old husband Tom has helped me with a lot of questions because I've been a bit busy going viral. Um, oh, did I mention that? Um, so question one then. What is the capital of Canada? Question one, what's the capital of Canada? All oh, having a little think about that one. Sorry, not old. It's like the old ball and chain, that expression, that's what I was going for. I'm being ticked off by my own husband in another room now where he's gone to eat dinner and join the quiz. Question one then, what is the capital of Canada? Moving on to question two. Team dog eggs. Charming. Uh, question number two, how many items make up a baker's dozen? How many items make up a baker's dozen? Over 600 of you watching right now, that's brilliant. Glad I'm providing some kind of service. 
How many items make up a baker's dozen? That is question number two. Anyone wanting to know about how long it'll take? Probably about an hour is where we, where we tend to finish up. Uh, question number three. At which race course is the Champions Stakes run? That is uh, Linford Quiz Team. Now that is good. That is good. Uh, at which race course are the Champion Stakes run? Norfolk and Chance. Yes, I've seen that before. Team Trowbridge Senior. Well done, Ken. Um, Jude. That's some naughty emojis, but I like it. Uh, that was question three. At which race course are the Champion Stakes run? Go Revs Massive. Yes, Claire. That was question three. Have we all got a race course down there? Let's hope so. The Savills in Huddersfield appropriately named Gin will fix it. That's nice. Good to have something positive around that name, isn't it? Uh, OK, question number four. How many countries does the American rainforest span? Am American, what am I on about? Amazon. How many countries does the Amazon rainforest span? Can't even read my own typing. Thanks, Alex Jones. I will have a G&T on you. You're most kind. Uh, that is uh, question number four then. How many countries does the Amazon rainforest span? How many are included under the canopy as twere? Hello to all the London Eagles. Massive. Some of you might have heard one or two of these questions before because I've had to do some very quick rehashing uh, of old uh, quizzes. But um, London Eagles, the uh, best touch club in London. Uh, so... Uh, Cheers to you all. Bars open now, the boss stocks. Make sure you've got yours. So, uh, so that was question four. How many countries does the Amazon rainforest span? Yeah, Lisman, I, I did manage to read out one of the answers with the question uh, on Saturday. So which one will it be? Who knows? Uh, question number five. At 640 days, which mammal has the longest pregnancy? Is it the Indian or the African elephant? So at 640 days, which mammal has the longest pregnancy? Is it the Indian or the African elephant? Yes, Caroline. Glad to be making a day. Team Tough Null Totties. Hmm. Big up the Sea of Greeners. Hello, Siobhan and everybody, and all of, all of the friends of the Peters that are taking uh, part. That's the word I was after. I forgot the word part. Occasionally, your brain just leaves you while you're in a room talking to your mobile phone. Uh, question number six. Uh, this is the one for my generation. Um, Ironic by Alanis Morissette is from the album Jagged Little Pill. What track number was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, ironic by Alanis Morissette is from the album Jagged Little Pill. What track number was it? That is question number six. For all those who bought CDs back in the day. They are still numbered, I guess, on, on uh, iTunes, but uh, don't go looking now. Team Frasburn, Omar Marines. Why am I wearing makeup, Scott? It's just my pretty eyes, I'm afraid. That's all that is. Uh, that was uh, question number seven. Uh, question number eight, oh, no, that was six, wasn't it? Moving on to seven. According to Domino's Pizza's website, question seven, according to Domino's Pizza's website, what is its busiest delivery day of the year? What's its busiest delivery day of the year, Domino's Pizza? <laughs> Lovely singing, Ali. Enjoying that. Love that noise. Cheers. Hello, Rocky. We're joined by a bit of rugby royalty there. Uh, England's most capped rugby player, Rochelle Clark. Hey, Rocky. Good to have you with us. Uh, hope, you're, uh, hope you're all self-isolating healthily and sensibly. Um, question eight. Uh, I was asked to put in a hockey question uh, by someone online, and I said field or ice, and uh, they are, well, in North America, they... There is no word you put in front of hockey. Um, so, question eight. Which NHL side won back-to-back -back Stanley Cup titles in 2016 and 17? 
Kwisakabusi, that's good. Yeah, Jenna, I think you can have that one. I think you're all right with that. Uh, so that is uh, question number eight. Which NHL side won back-to-back -back Stanley Cup titles in 2016 and 17? I don't know the name of any NHL side. No, I don't either, no. Yeah, quiz on my face. It's an old one. It's an old one. There's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Uh, all right, question number nine. Who is the head coach of the England rugby team? Ah. Who is the head coach of the England rugby team? That is uh, question number nine. A couple of little sporty numbers for you there. All right, question number 10. Uh, what Italian word means before the meal? What Italian word means before the meal? Relevant to food and menus, perhaps, if you've been to an Italian restaurant. That's question 10. What Italian word means before the meal? Thoughts with everybody in Italy. Obviously a pretty tough time over there, so uh, sending a lot of love to Lombardy and, uh, and all the regions in Italy who are struggling at the moment. Emma, chair, made.com. Comes up in every quiz, this. Quite like it. Chance to show off the house furniture. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a beauty. I just need a white cat, though. Haven't got that. Uh, so that was uh, question 10. Uh, question 11. In what decade was the first model of the now world-famous Mini released? So uh, in what decade was the first model of the now world-famous Mini released? The Kubrick chair as well, by the way. That's all right, Emma. Tom, you in Spain, are you? Yeah, tough times over there too. Tough times everywhere, really, aren't they? Aren't they? Yep. I think the numbers have been going up fairly strong in Spain. But we're not, we're not talking about all that, are we? We're not talking about that. Gerbers are still going strong, aren't they? We chatted about them on Saturday. I had to take out a couple of the roses, though. I knew when he gave them to me on offer, I thought, they're not long for this world. Uh, so uh, I had to get rid of them. But yeah. Love the gerbs. Look at these bad boys. Just so pretty. Uh, so that was 11. In what decade was the first model of the now world famous Mini released? Uh, now a very topical question for you. Expertly written by uh, the husband. I don't have a cat, so if no. Um, question 12. Which US state is the increasingly popular uh, Zoom video communications company headquartered? That is, which US state is the increasingly popular Zoom video communications company headquartered? Um, and I got sent the video that probably a lot of people are being sent today of the uh, Zoom chat that some companies clearly are having. There's about 20 little screens on the laptop and bottom right, the bloke in its start bollock naked. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, and you can see at the moment he walks into shot, you can see everyone just going, oh my God, it's just priceless. Um, was that a repeat of question 10, did I hear? I will do that. The Italian word uh, that means before the meal, as you asked. Yeah, a couple of people wanted to know. The Italian word meaning before the meal. That's what uh, Agatha quiz team. Oh, oh, I think we've got a good one there. That is very good. Um, all right, we're up to question 13. Mark, your daughter Sarah's no use. Mm, in the quiz or life in general? Sad times. Uh, question 13, Indian giant... Red-tailed and yellow pine are all species of which animal? That is Indian giant, red-tailed and yellow pine. They're all species of which animal? Hmm. Big hello to all of you who are the new followers here, who came here going, oh, that bloke who does all the silly voices also makes a twat of himself hosting a quiz. Um, so yes, that's me, one and the same. Uh, question number 14. Uh, from which country did Madagascar gain independence in 1960? History and geography in one question, I know. Uh, that is question 14. From which country did Madagascar gain independence in 1960? Oh, come on, question 13 again. That was the Indian giant, red-tailed and yellow pine are all species of which animal? 14. From which country did Madagascar gain independence in 1960? Mm. 
Question 15. Thank you, uh, Smiley Diamond. Thank you very much. Uh, question 16, I think, uh, no, 15 we're on, aren't we? Yeah, what is the world's most popular wine grape variety? What is the world's most popular wine grape variety? It's two words. I'll give you a little clue there. Two word answer. Uh, it's a one pointer, but it's a two word answer. The world's most popular wine grape variety is what we're looking for uh, for question 15. Getting a bit nasally. I've not seen anybody. How can I be getting a cold? Da da da. <coughs> Did you get, oh, get all that? Sorry, slurping away. Uh, that was question 15. Uh, question 16. Tetris and Pokemon are the two most popular Game Boy games with a combined number of sales of 66 million. But which is, <coughs> excuse me, which of the top is, no, come on, read properly. But which of the two is top of the leaderboard by a mere three and a half million? I'll read that again for you. Tetris and Pokemon are the two most popular Game Boy games with a combined sales of 66 million. But one of them is top by a mere three and a half million. Which one is it? I do love a good semi on, JP, I do. That was question 16. Question 17. Uh, in what year did Brian O'Driscoll make his debut for the Arnhem Rugby team? Question 17, in what year did Brian O'Driscoll make his Ireland rugby debut? Yes, Mark, big shout out to all the nurses and doctors. To be fair, if they come home, they're probably so tired they're not doing this quiz. Um, but uh, hopefully more of them can join us at the weekend or certainly the teachers that are still having to work. Uh, what was that, Caroline, you wanted to repeat of a question? Was it 13 still? Indian giant, red-tailed and yellow pine are all species of which animal? Okay. Okay, there's been a bit of a freeze, has there? You've missed a couple. Okay, maybe, maybe that's all of you, maybe it's some of you. Uh, so 13 was Indian, giant, red-tailed and yellow pine are all species of which animal? And question 14, from which country did Madagascar gain independence in 1960? All right. Um, okay. So we had, in what year did Brian O'Driscoll make his Ireland debut? And pharmacists. Shout out to the pharmacists I just saw there. Um, he didn't make his debut for the pharmacists. That was a shout out mixed with a question there. Um, that could go wrong. Uh, question number 18, Somerset County is bordered by four others. Somerset County is bordered by four others. Can you name three of those counties? So Somerset County is bordered by four others. Name three of them. Islamic State. That's nice, isn't it? Hmm. I've got to do a radio interview at about 20 to 10. Might as well have had a bit of gin by then. Uh, question 18. Somerset County, bordered by four others. Name three of them. How are you getting on with that one? How are you doing there? Yeah, rugby media is my company. There might be some rugby questions in here, sort of uh, par for the course. Playing to my audience. Uh, question 19. If you're, uh, if you're done with your three out of four counties that border Somerset for question 18. Question 19 is the Ditloids. Um, so for those of you new to what a Ditloid is, um, the old example I use, 18H on a GC would be 18 holes on a golf course, that kind of thing. 18H on a GC would be 18 holes on a golf course. So I'm now going to read out two of these ditloids and uh, you can note them down and work out what they are. So, uh, 
The first one, 7D in SW. 7D in SW. That is uh, the first one. And the second one, 13S on the AF. That is 13S on the AF. Right. Hope you've got that. So those are the diploids. 7D in SW and 13S on the AF. Point for each one of those. Good luck with them. That is question number 19. Question number 20 is uh, name three of the four, another three out of four, name three of the four top flight football teams that David Beckham has played for. So name three of the four top flight football teams that David Beckham has played for. I once went to an event where he was and he walked past me. He's very tall, sort of broad, he's well proportioned. You know, he smelled of just sort of bark and musk. It was quite overpowering. Gonna have to top this up in a minute. Good job, it's nearly half time. How are we all doing? Uh, I'll take a couple of requests for repeats then. If anybody needs any repeated, uh, then uh, fire away. And we'll go through the answers in, uh, in just a minute. Team Elon Musk it and your zero from 20 so far. Right. Strong. Any more for any more? Any more repeats? You all seem relatively happy. Uh, we'll just uh, give it a minute for you to uh, run through the rest of them and uh, see if there are any that you want. Uh, six was Ironic by Alanis Morissette is from the album Jagged Little Pill. Uh, what track number is it? Quiz Team Quarantino. Coming in strong, says Bryony Banks. It's a good name. Nice bit of alliteration, Bryony. I like that. Parents strong on the naming there. Can you repeat the ditloids? Yeah, okay, so 19, question number 19 was 7D in SW and 13S on the AF. So the first one, question number 19, the two ditloids. First one is 7D in SW, second one 13S on the AF. I uh, will just check and see if I missed any. 14, I think you want, C C what? Camilla wants 14 to 17. Cool, blimey, we'll be here all night. 14, from which country did Madagascar gain independence in 1960? 15, what's the world's most popular wine grape variety? And 16, Tetris and Pokemon are the two most popular Game Boy games. Which one has sold the most? And 17, in what year did Brian O'Driscoll make his Ireland debut? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right, we are going to go through the answers. I'll give you 10 seconds just to round them off. <laughs> All right, let's run through the answers for the first half of Nick's Pub Quiz. Oh, yeah, where are the loos? They're just at the back, just back around the corner. Yeah, you should be good for that. All right, let's run through the answers then for the first half. And uh, question number one was, what is the capital of Canada? It's Ottawa is the answer that you want there, Ottawa. And uh, we are then on to question number two. How many items that make up a baker's dozen? It's 13. 13 is the answer to question number two. Uh, question number three, uh, which race course is the champion stakes run? It's Ascot. Ascot is the answer. Question number three, where the champion stakes is run. Question number four, how many countries does the Amazon rainforest span? How did you get on with this one? Uh, it is nine. Nine is the answer to this one. Um, any bonus points to name them? Let's see how many of these that you've got. Uh, in your mind anyway, you didn't have to write them down. Oh, Russell, very good. Uh, Brazil, Ecuador, Venezuela, Suriname, Peru, Colombia, Bolivia, Guyana and French Guyana. So uh, I hope you got them all. Well done, Big Russ. 
he knows his, he travels and knows his geography. He's a big man, he knows some things. Um, so that was the answer to question four. Didn't have to name the list of them. If you did, uh, then, uh, you know, well done. Uh, okay, uh, at 640 days, which animal has the longest pregnancy? The answer to question number five, it was a 50-50 Indian or African elephant? It is the African elephant. 640 days, my God. Grapes. Uh, thanks for just posting that. Um, question number six. <laughs> Ironic by Alanis Morissette is from the album Jagged Little Pill. What track? It was track number 10. Track number 10 is where you found Ironic. Lizzie's from Tooting. All right, Lizzie's. I don't know what Lizzie's is. Should I? I did, though. Go have, go get brownies from the Short and Sweet Bakery who are based in South London. My goodness, look them up and get them delivered. I made our whole the household happy. Um, where am I while I'm promoting local businesses for nothing? Uh, <clears throat> question number seven. According to uh, Domino's Pizza's website, what is its busiest delivery day of the year? It's New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve is the answer to that one. I'd have thought New Year's Day would be, you know, sorry, more hangovers, and, but no. New Year's Eve is the answer to that one. Um, and there's a bonus question. Uh, what topping is the most popular in the US? 10 seconds to think of that one. What's the most popular topping in the USA? Mm. I haven't frozen. I'm just looking at you. Uh, it's pepperoni. Pepperoni is the, uh, yeah, I'd have said New Year's Day as well. But New Year's Eve, apparently. Uh, question eight. Uh, which NHL side won back-to-back -back Stanley Cup titles in 2016 and 2017? It was the Pittsburgh Penguins. Pittsburgh Penguins uh, is the answer there. Hope you got that answer uh, for question eight. Uh, question nine. Who is the head coach of the England rugby team? Ah, it's Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones is the answer. Well done, Joshua, for the Pittsburgh Pe uh, Pe 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 Penguins. Uh, Rachel, the answer to question number six was track number 10. That's what you're after there. Uh, that was eight, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and nine, Eddie Jones, the answer, who is the coach of the England rugby team. Um, question number 10, which Italian word means before the meal? Antipasti. Antipasti is uh, the answer to that one. Um, so uh, well done if you got that. Question number 11. In what decade was the first model of the now world-famous Mini released? If you said the 60s, you're wrong. It was 1959, so it was the 50s. Uh, 1950s is the decade we were after for when the first Mini model was released. Uh, question number 12. Which US state is, uh, well, the increasingly popular Zoom video communications company headquartered? Of course it's California. Of course it is. California is uh, where Zoom are based. That was the answer to question number 12. Uh, question 13. Indian giant, red-tailed and yellow pine are all species of which animal? I think maybe there was a bit of a, a freeze on the video at that point. But uh, Indian giant, red-tailed and yellow pine are all species of squirrel. And uh, we're hoping to get some in a tree outside here soon. And uh, it might be all I've got to film for uh, life commentary soon, given lockdown. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, question 14. Uh, from which country did Madagascar gain independence in 1960? Chipmunk? No, because it's not actually the same animal, but I appreciate your effort. Um, from number 14, uh, country did Madagascar gain independence in 1960? France. France is the answer to question 14. Question 15. What is the world's most popular wine grape variety? Two words I said, it's Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon is the world's most popular grape variety, wine grape variety. Uh, question number 16. Uh, Tetris and Pokemon are the two most popular Game Boy games with a combined sale of 66 million. The one with three and a half more than the other is Tetris. Hopefully you got that. Tetris and Pokemon, two most popular, but Tetris is still out there as the leader. Question number 16, Tetris. Uh, question number 17, uh, in what year did Brian O'Driscoll make his Ireland debut? Uh, it was 1999. That was when uh, O'Driscoll made his debut for Ireland, um, the legend that he is. And question number 18, Somerset County is bordered by four others. Name three of them. You could have had any three of Dorset, Wiltshire, Gloucestershire or Devon. 
any of those ones. Dorset, Wiltshire, Gloucestershire or Devon, give yourself uh, a point if you've got all three. Uh, if you've got two, have half a point. If you've got one, nothing at all. We love Bod, of course you do, Claire Davis. Um, Sauvignon for half a point? Mm, go on then, Rob. I'm feeling generous. Go on, have half a point. Doesn't really matter, does it? But anyway. Uh, okay, question number 19 was the Ditloids. How did you guys do at this one? Um, I don't think this one was too bad uh, compared to uh, a couple of the others that we've had. Uh, so 7D in SW. Seven dwarves in Snow White. Seven dwarves in Snow White. Seven D in SW. Um, how many points for the counties? Oh, a point for all three, half a point for two, nothing for one or anything else. Um, so, uh, yeah, seven D in SW for question 19. Seven dwarves in Snow White and 13 S on the AF. Did any of our uh, colleagues across the pond get it? It was uh, 13 stripes on the American flag. 13 stripes on the American flag, the answer to the second Ditloid. Hopefully you got all of those. And, uh, and then the last question in the first half. Name three of the four top flight football teams that David Beckham has played for. Um, you could have had any one of Man United, Real Madrid, AC Milan and LA Galaxy. That's Manchester United, Real Madrid, AC Milan or LA Galaxy. Similar rule to the counties there. If you've got all three, it's a point. If you've got two... Uh, it's uh, half a point. If you've got one, nothing at all. Nothing. Um, so, uh, so that rounds off the answers for the first half of Nick's Pub Quiz. So, Adam up, let us know uh, what you got. And uh, it's nearly time for more gin and tonic. Uh, lots of people saying PSG about the uh, David Beckham question. That's allowed, is it? Because that wasn't on the list. Right. Well, oh, you're getting me another gin and tonic. Oh, my beautiful. See, here is his hand. Here's Tom's hand. Ooh. Finish that off. Don't have to leave my chair now. Um, how do we get... Oh, some low scores. It was obviously a slightly tougher one, was it? 11 out of 20. Um, how are we doing? Nine so far. It seems to be around the sort of 9, 10 to 11. PSG's in there as well. Yeah, I didn't have that down, but clearly I should have done. Um, so, uh, so that's our bad. Um, I'll let you have that one as well. So uh, that's fine. Eight and a half, 11, uh, eight out of 20, must try harder. Excellent, Thomas, making it up as we go. Yes, all right, PSG. Yes, all right. Nine, boo. Sorry, Jem. Uh, tens. I mean, you're all around about. Um, good work, Rocky. Ten, not bad. 18 and a half, Emma. Come off it, really. That's very impressive. If so, pop or four. And uh, whoops, eight, Mark, not bad with uh, 11. Got to get better. 14. Uh, Will Hooley's got 11 and a half. Um, Russ has got 12. Lots of you coming through. 11 out of 20 for Agatha Quiz Team. I do like that name. Uh, nine and a half. Um, oh, not doing too bad. Um, who else have we got there? Let's just uh, check up there. Rusty. Oh, half a mark ahead of CJ. Um, come on, CJ. Sheila, 12 for you and Bentley. How many did Bentley get? I'd be interested to know. Um, and, uh, well, you're all doing well. Team Nelters, Nelters is it? Ten and a half from Colin. And uh, only Google the NFL. Why Google it at all? I'll tell you the answer if you don't know it. You don't know it. Anyway, uh, 14 and a half, Wormster. That's not bad. Henry Henry, 17. That's pretty good. Lemon Quizzle Cake, got 11. I like that name. Redstone Rovers. Uh, and then Hayley Ann, 13 and a half. That's good. 12, Wheeler. That's very good. Uh, Jeff says, Tom's mum got seven. There you go, Tom. Angela got seven. Um, well done, Angela. Um, so uh, what have we got here? Another message. Uh, I'm going to justify my low score of six by the fact I'm playing by myself. Well, you certainly can. Um, so well done, everybody. Not too bad at all. Um, Charlotte Axford there with 10. Um, 15 out of 20 for the quicks in Sear Green, the, uh, the quick quizzes. That's pretty good, Rosie. I like that. Will Simpson, nine. We'd agreed we would have been 12. Uh, the message disappeared before I got the chance to read it um, and playing by yourself. But basically, this is your chance to uh, go and get yourself a drink um, and, uh, yeah, have a minute or two um, to uh, just uh, feed and water yourselves. We'll get underway with the second half of the quiz in, uh, in just a moment. In the meantime, well, I mean, we can sit here and chat as part of Nick's Pub Quiz. Oh, thank you, my beautiful assistant. Cheers. Cheers. Raise your glasses. 13. Well done, Bonnie. Hmm. Hmm. 
You're trying to get me drunk. Uh, the dog eggs are having a mare, are you? Could you slow down a bit for the second half? Am I going too quick for you? I slowed it down on Saturday. Maybe I've picked up the pace again. Uh, intermission is a good time to make your donation to PayPal. Oh, Shona, my agent. Um, yeah, I'm doing this now. Sort of Natalie Cathy. Just doing this now. Um, instead of commentating on all the sport that isn't there. Um, so, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, drop a little contribution if you're enjoying yourself um, in uh, the PayPal link, which is in the description, if you can find it via the YouTube thing. Um, I know some of you have already done that before for the last quiz. If you were generous, then I don't need you to do it again. Um, but uh, if you want to drop a couple of quid in um, or a couple of bucks, wherever you're watching from, it's very much appreciated and goes towards our lockdown funds. Well, I've got no work for the foreseeable future. Um, so, uh, yeah, really appreciate it. So thank you very much um, for, uh, for that. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're not too far away from cracking on with the second half of the quiz. Make sure you've got your, uh, your glasses charged. And, uh, and we'll get underway very shortly. Um, thank you to all of you for tuning in from wherever you are as well. It's lovely to have you all here. Um, we're all spending this, uh, this hump day together. Um, and uh, we'll get through it. I'm sure we will. Huge thank you as well, of course, uh, as we mentioned earlier, to all of the medical professionals who are looking after us uh, and those in the hospitals. It's, uh, it is a curiously unprecedented time, um, but we'll get through it together, I'm sure. Um, let me give you question 21. It's something that you can continue to work on uh, because it is uh, the anagram which will kick off the, uh, the second half. Um, so uh, what is the only other nine-letter word that you can make from the word orchestra. Orchestra, I will spell orchestra for those of you that need me to. Uh, O-R-C, you write this down, O-R-C-H-E-S-T-R-A, orchestra. What's the only other nine letter word you can make from that word? You can have a little bit of time to work on that as we go through the second half. Um, yeah, so I've nearly got to 100,000 followers on Twitter. Why is that about? A week ago, I was on 15. Uh, I think I've done 30 interviews uh, on uh, radio and yeah, it's gone bananas. So thank you to all of you that have found my inane, stupid commentary entertaining and a big shout to all of you, my friends and family, that know I've been doing it for the last 30 years. Um, if you missed the word for the anagram, it was orchestra, O-R-C-H-E-S-T-R-A. Um, yeah, 15,000, I was on 15,000, but yeah. Absolutely mental. What a crazy week it's been. It's kept me distracted from, uh, from what's going on, hasn't it? But uh, anyway, uh, that was question 21 then, the nine letter word from the word orchestra. Hopefully uh, you've all got that one. Hey, Emski, nice to have you with us. Um, so shall we move on to question 22? Are we all ready? I think we probably are. Uh, all right, question 22. In what year was the euro currency introduced? In what year was the euro currency introduced? That is question 22. How often are the quizzes, Neil? Uh, the next one's going to be Saturday night. Saturday night, um, in my best BBC announcer voice um, of the sort of mid-90s. Saturday night on YouTube Rugby Media. Um, will be another pub quiz. Might go for 8.30 again in case those Geordie boys are still doing Saturday night takeaway. Takeaway? Takeaway. A lot of people are watching that. So I may as well go come on after it, you know. Don't compete for the airtime. Um, so probably 8.30 on Saturday or after Ant and Deck Saturday night thing when I've checked the schedules. But that's when we'll do another one so that more of our key worker friends can join us. And we can all have a nice bottle of something, know what I mean? Uh, so, question 22. In what year was the euro currency announced was, uh, sorry, yes, introduced even. That's the word. 8.30 spot on. Thanks, Emma, for checking. Uh, question 23, then. Now, this might take a bit of maths. You might want to write this one down. It, it, it is a bit of maths, rather. Um, it's not about knowing the answer to this. It's about getting there. You've all got phones. They've all got calculators on them. But what about a bit of brain power? So, are you ready? The concept's simple, you'll just need to scribble it out. Um, if you were to multiply the numbers one to nine, what's the answer? So one times two, the answer to that, times three, the answer to that, times four, times five, times six, times seven, times eight, times nine. Yeah? Get it? So what is the answer to that? 
if you multiply 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8. Hopefully you get it. Um, but write it down, have a go, try and do some math for our American friends. They drop the S. Don't know why. G and T is my friend. Mmm, ice. That was question 23. Can you have 10 minutes to work it out? Yeah, Maury, you can have a little bit of time. Let's, uh, let's give you a bit of time for that one. I'd love to play some other music. I need the old uh, gallery music from... Um, I was going to say Heartbeat there. That's not right, is it? What was the, what was the programme with Tony Hart? Heart, Heart... Oh, my God, I've had a mental blank. Someone will tell me. With Morph and everyone. Is it Heart... I mean, Heartbeat is the Sunday night thing. Take Heart! Thank you, Dermot. Straight in. What was it, Heartbeat? It was Heartbeat. Okay, good. I was thinking of Nick Berry on a Sunday night, but it was Heartbeat first, wasn't it? Yeah. Good. People of a certain generation will get that. Some will not know. Barford on 23. Yeah, the countdown timer would be handy, but then it would probably get recognised by YouTube, and this whole stream would get taken down, which some people would probably be happier with, given how their performance is going. Um, yeah, question 23. If you missed it... Yeah, Vision on, Tony Hart was on, but I, I meant Heartbeat, because then they had the gallery, didn't they? Um... But I'm also thinking of that other piece of music which was used in another... That's kind of what I meant. But that wasn't used for that, I don't think. Um, I spoke to someone today who's got uh, all of the Hanna-Barbera theme tunes on a CD and the incidental music they used. So I can't wait for a copy of it, basically. That's going to be amazing. Uh, anyway... Makes me happy. Uh, 23, if you missed it, is you've got to add up the numbers from 1 to 9. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9. It's going to take some working out, but that's what a quiz is all about, right? I'll give you just another 30 seconds on that one, and uh, then we shall move on. Straighten this out. What was 22? In what year was the euro currency introduced? You know, this whole going viral thing, people want me to do some things. I'm having to consider speaking to an agent. It's all got very out of hand. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing, and it's distracting me fantastically from having no work. But my God, it's really, really marvellously nuts. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, should we move on to question 24? Oh, did I say add them up then, Carol? Oh, I'm sorry. Times them, times them, I melt multiply, definitely multiply, that one, multiply them all, multiply, sorry, add them up would be bloody easy. Um, so yeah, Top Cat Jazz is superb, Rob, you're spot on there. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping as well that soon, um, my lovely friend Stu, he sent me um, a clip of, uh, he sent me a little version of the theme tune he's making for me, yes. Um, Absolutely bonkers, but I'm having a sports theme made for me in the sort of old school style. Um, he sent me a bit of the plinky plonky version of it. My God, it's going to be brilliant. He's now orchestrating it for free. Things are weird, but excellent um, for, for me right now. Um, yeah, can't believe it. Anyway, question 24. Should we move on before I keep going on about myself? Uh, question 21. 21. Did you miss 21? That was the, that was the anagram. What uh, nine letter word can you make from the word orchestra? Alex Jones, give us another minute. Yeah, all right. Take heart, yeah. Heartbeat was more popular. Yeah, that was the one I meant. All right, 24 then. A float is the collective noun used for a group of which animal? A float is the collective noun used for a group of which animal? That was question 24. A float is a collective noun used for a group of which animal? We've had them the other way round for a little bit. Uh, the animals and what's their group? This is the group and what's the animals? A float, collective noun used for a group of which animal? Oh, lovely. Ballet, ballet. <laughs> it's 
a good chair to do Roly Birkin from this, actually. Get the full, yeah, entirely out of rubber. Uh, that was question 24. A float is a collective noun used for which group of animal? Question 25. Uh, which actor or actress is linked by the following films? All right, so which actor or actress is linked by the following films? The Hunger Games, Frost Nixon, and Dad's Army. So which actor or actress is linked by The Hunger Games, Frost Nixon, and Dad's Army? I always think this guy's one... There's a clue there. Yeah, he's one of those guys that... Uh... Oh, I know his face. I can't remember his name. He's one of them. So which actor is uh, linked by The Hunger Games, <laughs> Frost Nixon, and Dad's Army? That was question 25. Is it a man? Mm, damn it. Do you think? Um, the next few, by the way, are in lieu of a music round. We tried to do it for the last one. We posted a link to a page where you could play an MP3 of tunes with questions around them, but it was just all a bit messy, wasn't it? Didn't really work. If only YouTube would allow you to play a few seconds of something, uh, but the license would get basically get get this taken down. Boo. Um, <clears throat> so, in place of that, it is guess the song via the lyrics. All right. So, question number 26. I'm going to read out some lyrics. I just want you to tell me the song title. You can put the artist if you want, but you're not getting points for it. All right. So, that's how this is going to work. So, question 26. Here you go, your lyrics. I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. That's the lyrics of a song. What song? Well done, Katie. Singing away. Lyrics once more. I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. What song is that? My good friend Ross and his wife loved that song, loved this song, and thought they sort of just loved the song generally without analysing it. And we're like, oh, we should have that as our first dance at the wedding. And then realised that the lyrics are, I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. So they had to go for something else. Uh, question number 27. Your next bit of lyrical genius. Um, Question 27 then, the lyrics are Jealousy, turning saints into the sea, swimming through sick lullabies. I think most people should get that one. Question 27, Jealousy, turning saints into the sea, swimming through sick lullabies. Just the song title on that. Easy, Carol. Yeah, yeah. I think it's an international national anthem, Marcus, but yeah. I did, a, I did an interview with BBC Radio Leicester uh, yesterday, where at the end of the interview he said, we're encouraging all the people we speak to at the moment to keep everyone upbeat, so uh, just give us a song to, uh, to make everyone feel good. I went for five, keep on moving. I mean, you can't go wrong, can you? For all of my love of Stevie Wonder and Aretha Franklin and all the classy acts in the world, Five, keep on moving. Makes me happy every time. Uh, okay, question number 28. These are your next lyrics. Name the song. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. Charlie, you can never be unhappy in a poncho. Yeah, yeah, it's a good rule for life. Uh, that was uh, question 28, the lyrics, I want the song, another one that I think's uh, not too tricky. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore.
Question number 29. JP, can you stop putting the song clues in emoji form? Go and busy yourself in the bathroom or something. Uh, question number 29. 24, you were doing the maths, Emily, in Clapham. Uh, a float is a collective noun for a group of which animal? That was 24. Uh, okay, 29. Uh, the lyrics are as follows. Never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. Question 29. The lyrics are as follows. Never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. Just going to... Uh, I think a couple of people wanted some repeats there. Hello, Creating Gentry. Well done for uh, working out the comments, Mark. Uh, you're on 25, do you? The actor or actress, if you didn't hear it the first time, uh, linked by The Hunger Games, Frost Nixon and Dad's Army. Uh, but that was question 29. The lyrics, and I want the song name, Never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. Shout out to the mills in Scotland, please. Lovely to have the Scots with us. I did an interview today with a very well-known Scottish commentator um, for my podcast series, Q Commentator. That's going to be out in the next couple of days, hopefully. He was great. Uh... Question number 30. Ready for that one? Uh, question number 30. Uh, this one, you might know, I'm hoping you'll know this. Some of you might know this. Anyway, we'll go with it. Question 30. I ain't trying to mess with your self-expression, but I've learned a lesson that stressing and obsessing about somebody else is no fun. Hmm. That is uh, the lyrics for question 30. I ain't trying to mess with your self-expression, but I've learned a lesson that stressing and obsessing about somebody else is no fun. Just checking something while you're all there. Just need to, uh, yeah, fine, good. Just did that, lovely, all good. So that was the lyrics for question 30. Read that. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Oh, bat and ball, that's cruel, but very funny. Um, 30, I ain't trying to mess with your self-expression, but I've learned a lesson that stressing and obsessing about somebody else is no fun. All right. Um, so those are the song lyrics. That's the best we can do for music. Thank you, Ian. Clive Tilsey was good, wasn't he? He was great. Um, he even allowed me to indulge him in, uh, well, my chat of... My favourite moment of commentary out of many. Hello, hello, here we go! When uh, when Liverpool scored that one to come back from 3-0 down. Stephen Gerrard has put a grain of doubt in the back of Milan minds. It's all still in there. Uh, question number 31 then. Moving away from the lyrics, we are back to a touch of geography. Question 31. Which country was previously known as East Pakistan? Which country was previously known as East Pakistan? Sorry, Catherine, I'm, I'm not singing you those songs. 28. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. Those were the lyrics for that one. So. Uh, cheers. Thank you very much to those of you that have been donating and dropping little contributions via the PayPal link. It does all add up. It's been very, very nice to uh, to see it all rumbling through and going, oh, well, that's sort of rewarded me for what I've been doing. That's been very nice. Um, 27 again, Simon. Sure. Uh, that was jealousy, turning saints into the sea, swimming through sick lullabies. Well, that's the best I could do, Bryony, in the circumstances. Um, all right. So question 31. Which country was previously known as East Pakistan? Question 31. Question 31. Hope it's managed to work with those of you that were sort of hoping to look up, uh, hook up via Zoom and stuff. You've made a, found a way to make it work. Um, I'd be interested to hear about it afterwards. Oh, Shona, I will. There's a bit of a backlog of a few 
I think ones that don't come from here or something, I've just got to click a button, but I've, I've got a line of a dozen or so that I've just got to go through and go, oh, thanks. Um, okay, question number 32. Uh, which newspaper was founded in Manchester in 1821 by cotton merchant John Edward Taylor? That is, which newspaper was founded in Manchester in 1821 by cotton merchant John Edward Taylor? I think someone wanted question 26 there, I just saw. So uh, that was the first of our lyrics, uh, which was, I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. That was that one. An easy one, I'd say. Uh, it's only easy when you know it. Yeah, that's true. Question 32 then, that was, uh, which newspaper was founded in Manchester in 1821 by cotton merchant John Edward Taylor? Sorry to some of our foreign viewers. We may not know that, but have a stab. Question 33. I'm ready to move on to that one. The famous Weeping Woman painting was created by which artist? That is the famous Weeping Woman painting was uh, created by which artist? Art. Reminds me of one of my favorite Mary Whitehouse experience sketches. Art with a capital F. When at the ballet, do say Karyorov, exquisite with his pas de deux. Do not say, who's the woofter with the big packet? Uh, very, very good. Uh, question, uh, I haven't got the painting, Carol. Wouldn't be doing this if I did. Uh, question 34, uh, on which Jane Austen novel was the 1995 movie Clueless loosely based? Mm. Question 34. On which Jane Austen novel was the 1995 movie Clueless loosely based? One word. Bit of a clue for you. Mark, you know what happened when I did my Trump impressions. It went very badly. Bigly badly. Uh... Question 35. Are you ready? Very loosely, Russ, yeah. What was question 33 again? That was the famous Weeping Woman painting was, was created by which artist? Shout out to Wine Wednesdays. Mm, yeah, 34 was one word answer. Gemma, how have you lost the last four questions? Did the question freeze or are you drunk? Uh, Question 35. How many moons does the planet Mercury have? How many moons does the planet Mercury have? Moon. Everybody look at the moon. That's something to, look, to enjoy again, isn't it, during uh, lockdown? Go back through the whole series of the Mighty Boosh. Oh, that could be quite fun, couldn't it? Neil Armstrong, dancing on my face. Uh, 32, Gem. Uh, which newspaper was founded in Manchester in 1821 by cotton merchant John Edward Taylor? Buzz Aldrin, dancing on my face. I don't like Baileys, really. I, I, in a... In a baby Guinness, brilliant, but no, sickly otherwise, isn't it? No, Caroline, I could, I could have it stronger, to be fair. What's 31 then, Gemma? Uh, which country was previously known as East Pakistan? Or Pakistan, as I think uh, it's more locally pronounced. Pakistan. 
30 again, please. Oh, for God's sake. I ain't trying to mess with your self-expression, but I've learned a lesson that stressing and obsessing about somebody else is no fun. 33. Famous Weeping Woman was painted by which artist? Referencing old Greg. Good. Moon! Well done, everybody. Uh, right, so uh, we've had 35. How many moons does the planet Mercury have? Are we ready to move on? Cucumber tonic water? Yeah, so if I don't mind that. With Hendrix. Um, right, come on then. Uh, question 36. What type of foodstuff is a Norfolk giant? What type of foodstuff is a Norfolk giant? Here's a clue. It's fruity. Fruity. Question number 36. What type of foodstuff is a Norfolk giant? Hmm. Got that? Ready? Ready to move on? Had a go? Thought of a fruit? Good. Uh, question 37, after a year with this one. Uh, at which Olympic Games did current triple jump world record holder Jonathan Edwards win his only gold Olympic medal? That is, at which Olympic Games did current triple jump world record holder Jonathan Edwards win his only gold Olympic medal? Claire, that's just weak. Got to be prepared for this. All right. Olympic Games year. At which games did uh, Jonathan Edwards, the current triple jump world record holder, win his only gold medal? Question 38. What illness is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. That is, what illness is called by the Epstein-Barr virus? Question 34. On which Jane Austen novel was the 95 movie Clueless very loosely based? So question 38. What illness is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus? Mm. Shifty around in this chair tonight, aren't I? I? Should just relax. Could just move you closer, couldn't I? There we go. Oh, it's got to be rocky. You're a little bit close to the gerberas now, aren't you? As well. See, lovely, pretty. I wish I'd have done that ages ago. Uh, that was question 20, 38. 38. Which uh, illness is caused by the Epstein Barr virus? Olympics for gin, please. You want to take part in the Gin Olympics? You want there to be gin at the Olympics when it takes place now next year? I think you're drunk. Uh, question 39, two to go then, team. Uh, how many players are there in a baseball team? How many players are there in a baseball team? In the field thing or team? In a team. I can't remember what the details were. How many players in a baseball team? I looked it up, but there's an answer. If you haven't got the answer on my sheet, it's not right. That's how that works. All right, Emma, come and set dress for me next time. Jeez. So that was our penultimate question. How many players are there in a baseball team? And we're coming up to question 40. Who wrote the 1960 novel To Kill a Mockingbird? On the pitch, Joshua, is what I'm going for there. Uh, 2021 is going to be a hell of a year for sport. It's going to be amazing when, all, when everything comes back, isn't it? First time people are all back in stadia together, when the Olympics takes place. Oh... Just going for a beer in a pub's going to be the most exciting thing ever. The pubs are not going to know what to do with themselves. Uh, anyway, it's amazing what you take for granted, isn't it? Uh, question number 40. 
who wrote the 1960 novel To Kill a Mockingbird? Who wrote the 1960 novel To Kill a Mockingbird? Henry, Henry wants a repeat of number 29. That was one of the lyrics. Never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. I want the song title for that. Emma, <gasps> hugging my mum will be amazing. That's really tough, but yeah, you're right. No guarantee it'll be over by 2021. Paul, putting a bit of sunlight on us all. 28, please. Uh, fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. That was uh, where we are with that. 39, I'll say moo. Moo? Uh, 39, how many players are there in a baseball team? 38, what illness is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus? 30, uh, lyrics, I ain't trying to mess with your self-expression, but I've learned a lesson that stressing and obsessing about somebody else is no fun. Repeat 37, cool, oh, blimey. At which Olympic Games did current triple world record holder Jonathan Edwards win his gold Olympic medal? Catherine, it's in the, it should be in the expression, uh, the expression, just talking song lyrics, should be in the description underneath. It's paypal.me slash rugby media anyway, uh, if, uh, if you'd like to drop in a contribution. Um, so uh, how are you all getting on? 36, what type of food stuff is a Norfolk giant, Russ? My favourite gin, I'm not too fussy. I'm not one of these ones that goes big encyclopedic on all the gins in all the bars and all the things. Um, like a bit of Bombay Sapphire, keep it simple. Not, 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 you know, doesn't need anything too fussy now, does it? Um, oh, Katie, nice to know you're there as well. Uh, so uh, just uh, another few seconds to uh, go through the answers uh, and uh, then I will give you the answers. Um, so have an, uh, another last little look. Uh, a shout for question 34, on which Jane Austen novel was the 95 movie Clueless very use, use, uselessly, loosely based? Going to the polls to vote our president out would be amazing. My God, we'd all love that, wouldn't we? That would be good. Get him out. He's absolute, I mean, he's even more bonkers than ever with this whole thing, isn't he? But still, all of the retards in pockets of America that just don't get it are still going to vote for him, aren't they? I'll be able to get me a gin sponsor. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, there's a Graveney gin in South London, just uh, just here in Tooting. Oh, by the way, for those of you that are British and know that obviously Tooting is a place and Tooting Common is a place, um, one of the interviews I recently did with the USA station on the live commentary videos, they were like, uh, excuse us for asking this, but uh, is is Tooting Com is that a, is that a place? I was like, yeah, it's a place. He was like. Oh, I, I, I wondered if to, Tooting Common was a kind of play on words of Tooting Common. I was like, oh, amazing. No, it's a place. But um, yeah, it's such a joke name of a place. It's actually where I live. But yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, and all the Americans loving the dogging clip. And most of them don't know what that means. Which is great. Yeah, Harry, am I just down the road from you? Where are you, my love? Where are you? Do let us know. Um, all right, are we ready to go through the answers then? Are we happy that we've all got something down? Let's hope so. Yeah, gin post-isolation. Everything's going to be PI, isn't it? Um, no, it's not, but anyway. All right, question number 21 then. What is the only other nine-letter word you can make from the word orchestra? Cart horse. Who got cart horse? Hopefully you did. That was the answer to question 21. Cart horse was the... Uh, Result of the anagram. Question 22. In what year was the euro currency introduced? It was, yes, Gabby Appleton, she got that. Uh, a horse cart, no, not quite, Carol. Uh, I really hope you put that. Uh, in what year was the euro introduced? 1999. Hello, Gabby Apps. Nice to have you with us, by the way. Hope you're well, mate. Love to the fam. Uh, euro was introduced in 1999. Yes, good, good, good. Well done, team. Um, 23, right, if you were to multiply the numbers 
from one, two, three, one times two times three times four times five times six, all of that, up to nine. What is the answer? Ready? Three, one year out, Siobhan. Don't worry, we'll send you a T-shirt. Uh, it's 362-880. There we go. Someone's put it on the chat. 362-880 is the answer to multiplying all the numbers up. Um, so uh, I hope you managed to use your mathematical memory skills to, uh, to get that one. And that was the answer to question 23. Multiplying all the numbers, 362-880. Uh, question 24, a float is the collective noun used for a group of which animal? Anyone get this? I've not heard this before, but uh, the darling husband found this one out. It's uh, crocodiles. Yeah. If you got that, well done. Well done, the 12-year-old, for getting the maths answer. Drag bingo to Murray, JP. Where's that coming from? Sorry, Sam. But, you know, nice to, get the, nice to get the brain going. Yeah, crocodiles, not otters. Um, no, not jellyfish either. That's a nice idea. But no, crocodiles is uh, apparently the answer. Uh, so which actor, as I clued you in, uh, was the one linked by the Hunger Games, Frost, Nixon and Dad's Army? I think some wag put the answer on the chat. But for those of you that uh, needed it, the answer is Toby Jones. Toby Jones is the actor that links all of those three movies together. Toby Jones is your answer to question number 25. All right, we're into the lyrics now. Easy, bright side, fly me to the moon. Uh, that other one, yeah, let's go through them one by one, shall we? Um, you had Ian Lavender thinking of original Dad's Army. What an actor he is. Great man. Uh, yeah, so the first one, 26. I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. Uh, Easy by the Commodores. Easy by the Commodores uh, was uh, that. It's just the song that I want, so easy is the answer there. Uh, that's for 26. 27, jealousy turning saints into the sea, swimming through sick lullabies. That's Mr. Brightside by the Killers. Mr. Brightside by the Killers. Um, just the song title, of course. I'm giving you extra information, but uh, I'm sure you've probably all put that down anyway. Um, question 28. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. What is Fly Me to the Moon? Sinatra. Fly Me to the Moon. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. Um, question... Oh, repeating on me, excuse me. Question 29. Uh, never made it as a wise man. Um, I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. That is Nickelback. Why did I think of Nickelback? Because they followed me on Twitter. <laughs> I'm currently living. Yes. Nickelback. Uh, never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. Um, but they're a good fan of Nicholas Fumble. Thank you very much, Nickelback. Um, so that was great. Question number 30. Um, I ain't trying to mess with your self-expression, but I've learned a lesson that stress and obsesses and battered somebody else. It's no fun. But snakes and stones don't break my bones. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You need to calm down. You need to calm down is the answer. Taylor Swift. Uh, you need to calm down is the answer to number 30. If you haven't seen the song, if you haven't seen the music video, actually, uh, while you're on YouTube or after this, look it up. It's good. You need to calm down is the answer to question number 30. I'm not just telling you you need to calm down. The song's got... Anyway. Uh, all right. Um, how you remind me, sorry, was the answer. Yes, yes. How you remind me is the answer. Sorry, obsessing about Nickelback because they made me laugh. But yeah, how you remind me. Or you remind... Let me check. I had to check it myself. That's what I'm checking earlier. Yeah, how you remind me. How you remind me. You remind me. Any of those. No, I didn't follow back Nickelback, Sam. Uh, yeah. Question 31. Which country was previously known as East Pakistan? It's Bangladesh. So question 30 was you need to calm down, which was Taylor Swift. Question 31, the answer is Bangladesh. Yes, the irony that I had to remind myself of how you remind me. Yeah. I think someone posted that. Yes, that's quite true, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, Bangladesh was the answer to question 31. Question 32, the newspaper that was founded in Manchester, it's The Guardian. The Guardian, or The Grawniad, as uh, 
they can often be known um, in private eye anyway. Uh, question 32, newspaper founded in Manchester was The Guardian. Question 33, the famous weeping woman painting was created by Picasso. Picasso was the answer to question number 33. Question 33 was Picasso. Uh, question 34, on which Jane Austen novel was the 95 movie Clueless loosely based? It was Emma. Hello, Henry, who's eight, and Ted, who's ten, in Cheltenham. Hi. Thanks for being with us. You had to what, Rachel? Call the Guardian for getting the wrong date once. On what? Their newspaper? Uh, so question 34, the answer was Emma, the Jane Austen novel on which Clueless was loosely based. Indeed, Emma Sparks. You! Uh, question 34, how many moons does the planet Mercury have? Little bit of a trick question here. Zero, none is the answer. Mercury has no moons. No moons. Uh, question 36. What type of foodstuff is a Norfolk giant? Tis a raspberry, a raspberry. Type of foodstuff, Norfolk giant is a raspberry. Answer to question 36. Question 37, it was the Olympics in 2000. 2000 was the answer to question 37. Jonathan Edwards became uh, the world record holder in 2000. Billy No Moons, quite Rob. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> like that. Uh, 37 was 2000. Question 38, the illness caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. That's glandular fever. Glandular fever. Indeed, Sydney 2000, Colm. Uh, but uh, yeah, glandular fever is the answer to question 38. Question 39, how many players are there in a baseball team? Nine. Nine is the answer. Players in a baseball team, the answer is nine. I think yellow fever is the same thing as glandular fever, so no. Uh, players in a baseball team is nine. What was the mercury question? The answer was none. Remember, it's called mononucleosis, is it? Right. Um, so, uh, and then coming up to question 40. Thank you once again to all of you who have taken part tonight. Um, lovely to have you all here. Over 500 of you have stayed till the end, so that's pretty nice um, and humbling. Lovely to be, uh, to be able to entertain you a bit as we uh, head to the final answer, um, which is uh, question 40. Who wrote the 1960 novel To Kill a Mockingbird? It is Harper Lee. Harper Lee is the answer to question 40. Um, so uh, how did y'all do? How did you do? What are your sort of final uh, answers? Um, Maury, you're very welcome. Roll on Saturday. Yeah, we'll have another one then. Thank you. 17 and a half. You are improving. Well done, Hannah. And uh, I'll try and get a few more international questions in there. 15s. Um, thank you very much. Uh, that was unexpected and great fun. Unexpected because it was fun and you thought it was going to be a shit. Uh, well, who knows? Uh, Simon, you're very welcome. Um, if you've enjoyed it, then please feel free to follow the PayPal link in the description of this if you can find it. Um, it's paypal.me slash rugby media. Uh, if you want to drop in the price of a pint or a coffee or something there, it all adds up and makes me very happy. Uh, and is basically my only means of earning. So thank you very much for that. I hope you've all enjoyed it. 30 out of 40 is very good. Um, 18, poor effort tonight, but yes, thank you. You're very, very welcome. Emma, glad you loved it. Uh, ben Smith got 19 and a half. Vonnie, 25. That's pretty good. That's a good score. 25 and a half. Lily, 23. Uh, Saturday time is going to be 8.30, I think. I think we're pretty set on 8.30. Um, and uh, is that 28 something up there? I see 19 and a half from the Hooli. Uh, crew, Lisman 16, Rob Haggart 30, um, cheers Russ, thank you Amanda, good to have you with us, um, you will revise before Saturday, yeah maybe I'll put the questions out, that might make it slightly easier, uh, Jack got 23, 42 from Harry, that's outrageous, um, 
Who else have we got in there? Hannah, look after the streets of Tooting. You'll return one day. L enjoy the cuddles with Milo. I know you're overloading enormously. Um, give him some space, Hannah, yeah? Just chill out there. Uh, thank you, Ruth. Much appreciated. Um, and uh, yeah, listen, it's, uh, it's been good fun having you all here. It's nice to be able to group up on a moment like this and know that we're all sat about doing the same thing because there's nothing else to do, is there? Um, so enjoy the rest of your week. We will all get through it together. Um, I'll keep trying to find things to film and put out as hashtag live commentary because, uh, again, I've got nothing else to do. Um, and we will all be back here, hopefully, if you enjoyed it, on Saturday at 8.30. Um, so uh, there's little else to do other than to say cheers to everybody. Um, I'm going to get this down the hatch. And that's all for now from Nick's Pub Quiz. <laughs>